skipping this data's turnover ratio. Now, why we should calculate data's turnover ratio and what is its practical relevance? Let me show that here. Let's say my annual credit sales, my annual credit sales, and I'm going to take two companies, company A, company B. In company A, my annual credit sales is say something like 12 lakhs. Company B also has annual credit sales of 12 lakhs. Company A has average debtors, let's say it is 1 lakh, whereas company B has average debtors of, let's say, something like uh, 6 lakhs. So now, if I create relationship between these two, that is 12 lakh divided by 1 lakh, I get a number 12, and here I get the number 2. So this itself should communicate something. If you notice company A, they are selling goods on credit for 12 lakhs and they are average debtors. What is still pending receivable is only 1 lakh. Whereas if you notice company B, they are selling 12 lakh, but what is pending realization is 6 lakh. So which company is going to be in liquidity trouble? Which company is going to starve for cash? It's going to be company B. Why? Because sizable portion of their sales is still stuck with their debtors and that strain is depicted in this ratio. That is, if this ratio is low, it means you are going to have liquidity problem. Why? Your money is locked with the customer. And if this ratio is high, you are not going to have the liquidity problem because that money is getting collected first. So this ratio is nothing but debt no ratio. So debt loss turnover ratio is very simple. You take annual credit sales divided by average debt loss, and if you get a higher number, it means your debt loss or your credit sales are realized at a faster pace. And if you are getting a lower number, it means it indicates you are taking time, and it's a reflection of the liquidity strain you have in your business, mainly because of debt loss. Now, related with this, let us also find out what is the debt loss collection period. Like inventory holding period, we should also understand data collection period. So I'm just uh, running through that. Yeah, we also call it as average collection period, average collection period or data collection period. How we are going to do it? Look at here. You know what is your annual credit sales? In both cases, it is 12 lakhs. Let me find out monthly credit sales. Monthly credit sales is going to be simple. It's going to be 12 lakh divided by 12 months. So my monthly credit sales, in either case, it is 1 lakh. But what is the average data I'm maintaining? In case of company A, it is 1 lakh. What is my monthly sales? It is 1 lakh. So I can very easily say that I'm giving one month credit to my customers. But here, look at company B. My monthly sales is 1 lakh, whereas my average data is 6 lakh. It means I'm giving six months credit to my customers, which is absolutely unimaginable. And that's why this company is going to be in serious trouble. Okay, They are lacking the pace or speed in collecting money and obviously they'll have difficulty because their cash is stuck only with their customers. So if I calculate, if I create a relationship between these two, that is average data divided by monthly credit sales. Average data divided by monthly credit sales, here I get one and here I get six. So this is nothing but average this is average collection period. So it is one month and this is six months. And if you go and approach a bank for say working capital loan or cash credit, and if you show that you have one month data, then bankers should be very happy. And here the bank will run away. The bank will say, no, no, we are not going to fund this because already six months have gone, your customers have not paid, and what is the guarantee that they'll Pay. It means the bank fear that these will become bad debts, so the bank will not be interested in lending to a company which are likely to become insolvent. Okay, so that's the importance of uh, data turnover ratio and average collection period.